hi friends welcome back to yet another video in this particular video the topic i'm going to discuss is thermal processing of metals i have already told you about heat treatment different kind of heat treatments what is the reason why we perform heat treatment processes so in this particular segment i am going to discuss in a bit of detail what are the different kind of heat treatment processes you know already um, we uh, we do quite a lot of heat treatment processes to vary the mechanical properties um to name a few annealing is a heat treatment process then precipitation hardening is yet another um, heat treatment process so we will look into the details of what these processes are and what are the advantages and even in annealing whether there are different types of annealing and how they are classified and all those things we will be talking about um, to give you a, a bit of introduction mostly this type of the different types of hardening treatments or ha uh, heat treatments are named um, with respect to the microstructure that we will end up after the per performing that particular heat treatment um, a lot of them have relation to the microstructure that we will end up once we perform this heat, tr heat treatment process so let's start get started talking about annealing first of all so annealing is a very um relatively a common or a very widely used process um the process goes like this you heat your alloy to a temperature to a certain temperature and then you hold it you hold the whole system at a elevated temperature for a certain amount of time then you cool it mostly you cool it to room temperature see time uh, is an important parameter in this whole process that's why i've shown here temperature time plot so time can influence the kind of microstructure that you will end up with and in turn the microstructure will influence the kind of mechanical properties that you will have at the end of the process mainly annealing is performed to relieve stresses and to increase softness ductility and toughness i hope you understand the meaning of these words softness is just an antonym of hardness so the easiness with which you can make indentations into a material ductility the easiness with which you can elongate the material and toughness is the capability of a material to absorb energy mm, till failure and last but not the least we do mm, annealing for, uh, for obtaining certain very specific microstructures in our material so or one such type of heat treatment process uh, or once such type of annealing process is process annealing so the first question arises why we do a process annealing heat treatment so that question is answered here usually we will perform a process annealing when the material is already strain hardened so the strength has gone up but there is a significant reduction in the ductility and the material is more hard uh, now let's say i need to do some sort of machining which involves excessive plastic deformation so i have to improve the softness of my material then process annealing is recommended so that's a situation where we go for process annealing in, in the in the process annealing we need to increase the softness and ductility so what we are actually looking at is we are heating it to a temperature then we are holding it there for a while and then slowly cooling it to room temperature the annealing temperature should be chosen in such a way that it will allow recovery and recrystallization because we we need a much fine grain microstructure so recrystallization should happen moreover the annealing temperature should not be that high that surface scaling may happen we want we don't need surface scaling to happen during the process so annealing temperature should be chosen after taking into consideration all these things one more point to be noted is that you need a fine grain bound microstructure so you have to cool it quite fast because 
I don't want my grains. I I don't want to allow my grain str grain. Sorry, the grain formation to proceed further and finally I end up with a coarse grain microstructure. I don't want to do that. So that process has to be quite fast. I just need a fine grain microstructure. I don't want the grain structure to be coarse, or in other words, I don't want to allow the grain structure to further grow. Moving ahead, let's talk about another type of heat treatment process which is called stress relief. So as the name indicates, this process is mainly performed to relieve the internal residual stresses. In the first place then we would ask this question, how internal residual stresses are generated in the first place? So these are the few situations which will result in residual stresses. So the first thing is plastic deformation processes such as machining and grinding may build some amount of residual stresses into your material. You remember the very basics of um, stress strain diagram. When you pull your material above the yield strength then there will be two components of the strain. One is the elastic component of the strain and the other is the plastic component of the strain. The elastic component of the strain is um, once you unload the material the relax uh, the 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 what I mean by is that the there are two components the plastic strain and the elastic strain the elastic strain is restored once you unload but the plastic strain will be there so that is uh, that is something which may cause uh, residual stress um, at some point of time in the structure then non-uniform cooling let's say um, your fabrication process was at a higher temperature for example take the example of a welding process or a casting process then you are cooling the component while cooling the component somehow you couldn't manage a uniform cooling so some portion of the component was cooling at a different rate compared to the other then then also you may end up with residual stresses in the material then phase transformation so what happens is i told you about phase transformation so let's say my product and the product phase and the parent phase densities are different let's say for then there will be an amount of distortion or warpage or residual stresses um, generating in the material a good example is the martensite formation when you suddenly cool from a gamma austenite phase to martensite their densities are different so if you don't do it properly then there is a good chance that internal stresses will be generated so then that's why you do tempering and all those heat treatment processes. So as I explained, the problem with um, internal stresses is this. It may cause distortion and warpage. So you don't need internal stresses. So how we will remove internal stresses using this particular heat treatment called stress relief. So what do you have to do? You This is how the particular heat treatment process is performed. So you heat it to a higher temperature. It won't be as that high in the case of process annealing you don't have to take it to your recrystallization temperature and all it, it will it will it's a highly it's a high temperature but not high as a recrystal, recrystallization temperature mm, then make sure it is uniform throughout the material then you slowly allow the component to cool in in air so this is how you perform stress relief uh, I would like to add a little bit of information before we wind up this video. The question is oh, whether all alloys can be heat treated the same way or not. So this is the question that I am posing you. The answer is obviously not. Because um, in ferrous alloys there was a lot of phase transformations happening whether um, we talk about martensitic transformation. Um, there were phase transformations and because of those phase transformation we were able to attain different microstructures and different mechanical properties but this kind of phase transformations won't be there for 
certain non-ferrous alloys and a few types of stainless steel alloys as well a few examples of that category are heat treatable aluminium alloys then martensite stainless steel alloys and copper alloys so in all these types of alloys the heat treatment or the hardening and strengthening mechanisms are slightly different the process used is called precipitation hardening so the basic concept of precipitation hardening press precipitation hardening goes like this let's say you have two faces you you have a very dominant face um or uh, that can be thought of as a ma matrix then let's say i have another face another solid face and it is present as precipitates it is present as precipitates so as shown here so this precipitates will improve the strength and hardness of this particular alloy see this precipitates are formed when the solubility limit of one and the other is exceeded um, let's say if i am um, think about an aluminium copper alloy then once the solubility limit of copper aluminium is exceeded then copper will precipitate so this matrix will be aluminium which is the dominant phase and the precipitated particles will be of copper then this will improve the properties of this particular alloy so this is a brief introduction to precipitation hardening we will have a detailed look into the same so the key takeaway from this last portion is that all alloys are not heat treated in the same manner uh, precipitation hardening is a good option for alloys of this kind copper alloys and martensite stainless steels and for heat treatable aluminium alloys thanks for watching um so we talked about heat treatments uh i forgot to mention there are a few other strengthening mechanism as well few um, at our disposal one is the grain size refinement the other is strain hardening the other is solid solution strengthening so all these kind of techniques can be used to uh, improve the mechanical properties of your alloy and all these mechanisms uh, kind of or speaks volume about the versat versatility versatility that we can get with metals or working with metals so please remember that not heat treatment is not just the way to strengthen your alloy there are several other techniques which are listed out here which can which will be also useful in improving the mechanical properties one final piece of information before i wind up this video see heat treatment is just one type of strengthening or hardening mechanism in general there are a few other techniques which we can employ to improve the strength of a particular alloy a few techniques are listed out here the first one is grain size refinement the other is solid solution strengthening and the third one is strain hardening so these are all also techniques which can be employed to improve strengths um when we do heat treatment grain size in certain cases gets modified in some cases Mm, we change the mic mostly we change the uh, microstructure so i can um it, when we do heat treatment we are bringing out the difference in mechanical properties by changing the faces or changing the microstructure makes sense so changing is the microstructure or the phase of the metal is uh, just one technique you can employ all these techniques as well to improve the strength of your alloy thanks for watching